at full forward. Rockcliffe, gee, that was strong by Rockcliffe. That is a terrific goal. Fantasia or Fantasia? Roaming Arasio. Arasio Fantasia! I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. Welcome to Rock the Razbar, episode 15. I welcome my co-host, Arazio Fantasia. Rock, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good. Episode 15. I'm excited. We're up and about for this guest today. We have the one and only, number 18, Zach Butters. <laughs> Jeez, he's been, he's been wanted from everyone. The fans want him on, so we're lucky to have him today. Thanks for having me, boys. Um, yeah, I've tuned in for a few and um, all, so, all f- so good so far. So looking forward to yeah, today. Yeah, tuned in. Okay, that's good. That's I good. don't think he has because we <laughs> asked him a couple of shows about the question off air and he wasn't <laughs> sure about it. But let's jump into the footy from the weekend first and then we'll get to Zach. Uh, unfortunately, the senior team went down by 14 points. Pretty brave effort up there in Alice Springs against the, uh, well, co-ladder leaders, the Melbourne Demons. Yeah. Zach, you want to talk about how the game went more specifically? Yeah, obviously, yeah, it was a pretty close game, the whole game. Um, would get up at stages and they'd fight their way back, being a good team that Melbourne are. But, um, yeah, it was it was very hot up there. Um, so, yeah, the boys sort of struggled to get used to that a bit early, but, yeah, they were facing the same conditions. So, um, yeah, probably it was a pretty high turnover game. Um, the ball was going back and forth, and then they sort of were able to score a few times from that, probably have, through a lack of our composure um, in some ways. And then... Just our speed and defence probably let us down a few times as well. So um, that's what we reviewed today. How did it operate without Ken being there? Was he dialed in? Did he have any messages? Did he speak to the group at all? Or was it just Bass uh, pretty much seeing coach? Yeah, it was definitely a bit different not having Kenny there for the first time, probably since his time at the club, I think. Um, so, yeah, he was on the Zoom meetings um, at the hotel before the game and um, Monty ran a fair bit of that meeting as well. So I think it was a shared load. Um, but, yeah, Bass took up the majority of the load. And what what came out of it in the end? They gave up a bit of momentum in that third quarter. I think they had a bit of a run on, but a, a brave fight back to, to get pretty close, but unfortunately just couldn't close the gap enough. Yeah, I think it was just a turnover game. Um, they were able to sort of intercept and go back and probably go forward and more efficiently and kick their goals where um, when, when we sort of got our opportunities, we were able to um, be as polished going forward um, with our ball movement and score. So I think that's probably the decider in the game there. Is that, a, is that a connection thing? Do you think, Butsy, like how how we work together as, as forwards or, or what do you think, just an execution thing? Yeah, I think it's definitely execution and building that connection with the forwards and um, we've got a few new guys playing out there with Meady and um, yeah, some more midfielders probably playing some more forward as well. So yep. something we're definitely building as a team as well. Um, and yeah, you, Melbourne and their system, they've been doing it for a few years now. So I think um, they definitely had the upper hand when they had the opportunities to go forward because um, it was a pretty high turnover game in between the arcs where it was, it was pretty sloppy with, due to the heat and the fatigue as well. So I think just when they got their chances, they probably used them better. Yep. Yes, and unfortunately the Magpies lost to the Bloods as well, 27 points there on Saturday afternoon in some trying conditions, that's for sure. Uh, wet, windy and everything in between. AFLW, there's a, the Camp Alberton. Keep your eye out on the club website for that. There's some uh, great vision of that. They had a, a camp here, so um, unfortunately they couldn't get away, but it's a... Uh, Fascinating viewing, I'm told. Arazio. Yes, I saw the girls doing some trademark stuff on Sunday. That was lovely. And they have an open training session on Saturday morning at 9am. So it's a big action-packed Saturday of action this week for uh, Port Adelaide. Girls open training session here at 9am at Alberton. Then, of course, the, the two teams play Port Adelaide take on Geelong at Adelaide Oval at 4.05pm. And then Saturday night, the Magpies take on Central 7.40 Woodville Oval and... Also, there's an open training session for the men's at 9.45 on Thursday. Uh, really worthwhile get down. Have a look at the new mu- museum as well. Yes. Have you guys been through that? I have. Have you, Butsy? Yeah, I've been over there. It's, it's very exciting. And the new um, precinct as well is very yeah. good. And, yeah, the new port shops, um, yeah, nice and flashy and nice and big. So, um, yeah, all the new facilities over there look great. And, of course, we can't uh, not mention the Pirate Life Creed Lager competition. The details are on the box, how to enter there. It's flying off the shelves. Really? You yeah. bought a couple? Yeah, I've entered it numerous times. I want to have dinner <laughs> with Robbie. I don't see him anymore, so yeah. I'm trying to catch up with him. So I've bought a lot of boxes and entered a lot of times. I think you can only enter once, but all the details are on the box. Now let's jump in as Zach Butters. Uh, how, do you, how have you found your season so far? 
yeah, just before we start, I'm have to make that too. We might enter that competition and try to get a dinner with Rob as well. He's a hard man to get these days. He's near impossible to get, isn't he? Very hard, very hard. Rob, if you're out there, would love a dinner, mate. That's he, what happens. He, he doesn't tune into the show, mate. <laughs> That's what happens when you have 15 kids. I think he's got another one on the way as well. He's lined up for number 16 <laughs> under under about the age of five. But uh, how have you seen your season so far? Yeah, definitely growing um, in the role, the midfield and forward role. Um, the last month, probably playing more of a high forward and um, yeah, just doing what the team needs and um, yeah, trying to get some wins to hopefully play some more finals footy. So, um, But yeah, I felt like I had a really good pre-season and um, definitely developed my midfield craft and um, learned a lot um, in that time. And then yeah, the first half season playing mainly mid- midfield was good and um, yeah, just learning a lot about my role and um, yeah, learning some quality players. Now, fourth year of AFL footy, you're up to 63 games. You've won the Gavin Wanganee medal as the club's best player under 21. You were named in the All-Australian squad of 40 in 2020 when I carried you and made you look like a very good player. <laughs> uh, you're also in the AFL PAs, 22 under 22. You're very popular among supporters. Uh, they have sent through a lot of questions uh, for him to answer later on. But uh, Arazio, away yes. we go. But yeah, I was going to ask, is that, a, is that a conversation you had with Kenny? He says, oh, I need you to play a bit more forward because you were obviously playing really well in the midfield. Yeah, I think it gets, yeah, some some teams, um, some weeks, you give us different looks and, yep. um, yeah, you're just required to do um, what the team needs. And I think, yeah, you look at Willem Jury, he does it probably nine times out of ten every week. So, um, yeah, sometimes my, my role might look like more of a forward role and some other weeks might be more of a midfield role. So it's just whatever the team needs. And, um, yeah, the last few weeks being more forward and um, just trying to help helping that area and um, yeah there's a few new guys down there so looking forward to helping them as well. Media wise we uh, we don't see you out there everywhere nowadays you used to do a little bit have you fallen out of love with the media what's what's transpired there? Um, no I haven't fallen out of love with the media um, I just don't I don't love the media but um, yeah I, I, not, I have a fair bit of requests from Norts and Lucas but um, yeah I, I like to do the important ones which is why I'm on the pod today. <laughs> Well you, said. Uh, yeah, well very, said. very generous. We uh, appreciate you coming on. Where? Let's go back to where it all began for you. You're obviously not a big guy, listed as 181, which is very generous. I'd, I'd be surprised if you're <laughs> Hold that on. tall. And 78. And 78 kilos. I'm saying you're probably around the 71 kilos and potentially 173. <laughs> well, I think I've got you covered, and I'm 178. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a fair bit of just fecking it thrown around there. Um, I'm definitely 181. Um, I'm not weighing in at 78 at the moment, but I'm more than happy to take the kilos. <laughs> <laughs> 181 surprises me. You uh, you not you don't shy away from the big contest on the field. I think that's what Port Adelaide fans and players certainly love about you. It doesn't matter. You take on the biggest guy on the field, and generally they come off second best. Is that something that you've always done since you were a junior? Yeah, it's something I've always yeah love getting involved in um, footy and that's why I like footy the competitive nature and um, the contest side of things and um, yeah I, I feel like growing up in Dali playing senior footy quite early since I was 15 probably helped with that as well um, just playing with you know 30 year old men and um, yeah that was definitely a good experience and learning from them and um, yeah I felt like that's helped me um, get to where I am now in that side of um, the game. Yeah can I jump in sorry Rock. I want to touch on your home life. Obviously, your your, your family is very important to you. How, how do you go with uh, with missing home and, and being away from them? Yeah, as you know, um, I, I probably miss home a fair bit. Um, and I love getting back home and I love where I'm from and my family, my friends. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a pretty small um, town, so everyone's pretty close and um, I have a really good friendship group back there. So, yeah, I definitely do miss home, but I feel like I've yeah got a second home at the footy club here and have a really good um, bunch of mates and, um, yeah, I feel like with us young boys and then um, I don't feel like there's too much gap between um, the older boys and um, I feel like everyone has a really good connection here. So I think I've found a good place away from home as well. Yeah, you were drafted in 2018 with the Rosie and, and Dersma, a bit of a super draft that everyone talks about. Did, did those two help that transition when you when you moved over? Yeah, definitely help. Um, we, we, we had a pretty big draft as well with six of us getting drafted. So, um, yeah, we had six coming in at one time. That definitely helped um, settle the nerves. And then even just older guys like Kane Farrell and um, Willem Drew early days who made the move across as well, um, they were really good as well. You grew up in the country. I want to take you back there. Oh, there's a famous story about you and a friend just going for a run one day. Can you talk us through that? <laughs> I didn't bring it up, mate. Don't look at me. Oh, actually, maybe... Uh, me and my mate when we were probably 15 or 16 ran from Melton um, to Baxmarsh, which is about 17 or 18 k's. Um, so yeah, I got dropped off at his house. I don't don't know if we really informed our parents what we we're doing. Or, 
Um, but yeah, we did, we'd had it planned for a while and um, pre-season was about to start with footy, so we wanted to get it in. And um, yeah, basically just running along the highway <laughs> next to cars got 110 k. So I would I probably wouldn't recommend it to anyone out there. But um, yeah, it was definitely a fun run. Who came up with that idea? Like, why was that a thing? Uh, well, really good mates had played like um, rep cricket together growing up and um, footy together growing up, and he lived in Mountain and I lived in Bax Marsh, and so we made the drive a fair bit, and we always said, oh, we should run it one day, and then it sort of got down to crunch time, and we had to start, we had to start doing something about it, so we decided, decided to run it. Decided to go for a run. Very strange behaviour to run 17, 18 Ks, but uh, you are a strange character, Zach, that's for sure. <laughs> You speak about that super draft with Rosie and Dersma. Does it bother you that you always get compared or every time someone talks about one of you three, it's always you three? It's not Zach, the individual. It's not Connor, the individual, or it's not Xavier, the individual. Do you like being lumped in together or um, would you like a bit of your own time? Yeah, it was definitely fun um, when you get drafted together and um, you go through it all in the first few years. But I think now we're all pretty complete in our own selves and have our own different personalities and traits and we're all pretty different players as well so I think now that we've got a good balance um, yeah it's, it's definitely good to look back on and um, realise it was a good time for the club but um, yeah I think looking at it now that we're, we're all pretty unique in our own way. But you were named in the All-Australian squad as a youngster what were you 20? Yeah 20 oh I think I was yeah 20. 20 did, did you find there comes a lot of pressure obviously there's lots of talk about you're a star and Obviously, Rock and I, we know you are and, and how you go about your business, but do you find that external pressure gets to you at all and how do you deal with that sort of stuff? Yeah, not not too much really. I, I still don't really think that I, well, I feel like I've actually achieved that. Um, I, I have pretty high expectations on myself as yep. a footballer. Um, so, yeah, it's not something that I look back on and sort of get around myself for or, or take too much um, care into. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty keen on winning and just keep improving as a player every day. So... I'm sure I'll look back one day and, and um, be proud of it when I'm when I'm older. It's not often that an AFL player is the second best athlete in a relationship, but uh, <laughs> that's certainly the case for you. Your girlfriend Polly Doran has just moved over to England. Do you want to talk us through where how she's ended up there? She's a soccer player. Yeah, so Polly we went to school together um, at Maribyrnong on College back home in Melbourne, and then. Um, yeah, made the move over here and um, yeah, a couple couple years into the move, um, started dating. So yeah, she's been really good and um, yeah, she's been at Melbourne Victory um, for the last three or four years now and um, yeah, she's been trying to sort of expand and um, yeah, move on to bigger things as well and um, yeah, she was trying to get overseas and um, there's a few options there but um, yeah, she's been lucky enough to sign with Chris Palace um, over in Europe so yeah, she's very excited about that opportunity, and um, yeah, she just flew over there yesterday, so she's, I think she's just landed now. Um, so, yeah, I know she's very excited about that, and um, yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big club, and um, pretty big move for her as well. So, um, yeah, I know she's pumped. So, so she, you you get homesick being an hour away from home <laughs> on a flight. She just moved overseas. Yeah, I'll I'll give her credit. She's probably got more um, courage, and um, she's probably better with all that stuff than me. So um, sometimes she calls me um, the big sook about it. Also, <laughs> she's the next Sam Kerr. Is that what you're telling us? Oh, I don't know about that. I always bang on about how good Sam Kerr is. So, um, I'll, I'll, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I want to talk about your bromance at the club. It started with Rose, that was initial, and now you've moved on to bigger and better things. Mitch Georgiades, you two are inseparable. How did this come about? I wouldn't say I've moved on. I still play golf with Rose, okay. um, just about every day off in the same cart. So, um, yeah, definitely haven't moved on from Rose, but. I think Mitch has come in and didn't give me much of a chance to um, say no. So, um, yeah, both of them live just down the road for me. And, um, yeah, Mitch is kind of like that annoying little brother figure. So, um, yeah, it, we have a good relationship. He's yep. he's pretty funny. Um, we don't take too much things seriously. So, um, which is something we're probably trying to work on a little bit as well, um, trying to be a bit more serious and uh, mature. It's funny you say that because you remind everyone that knows you two of Harry and Lloyd uh, from <laughs> Dumb and Dumb. Is that fact? I don't know why he's still running with this joke. Um, I, w- I wouldn't say... Well, Mitch isn't so dumb. He got a 97 8 Yeah. Um, me, on the other hand, will skip the 8 He's His book smarts is as good as anyone at the football club, but he's street smart and just self-awareness is as bad as I've seen. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that. Um, it is as bad as I've seen as well, but i will still yet to bridge the gap on what, where, where it went wrong or... Um, how it's got so far far between between books and um, common sense. That's where you work so well together because you growing up in Dali, you're obviously quite, you know, that's a rough sort of, you would know, rough, that's that's not where you want to be. So it's a rough sort of area, isn't it? 
Oh, you could you could call it rough, but I I, I think it takes the reins over Benalla. Come on, Benalla's uh, a lovely place, but Port Adelaide's better than all three combined. All all the areas we grew up, the little Silver Spoon boy over there, <laughs> over at Norwood, over the eastern suburbs. That he uh, he struggles to get away from it. Let's talk about your diet now. You're a professional AFL player, but uh, let's be fair, Income, your diet's not sensational, is it? You you sh- you're, you're fussy. In, yeah, you're in shape. You don't eat salad. You don't eat anything you go out for lunch and what you have chicken you don't i don't think you eat cheese you have chicken and s- tomato sauce on bread yeah, rock you've been gone a year now rock so um <laughs> i'd like to ju- address this situation you've matured um, I've, I've yeah one polly's made me probably eat more things than i would have liked um what did polly give you a cracker <laughs> <laughs> yes he's, he runs the average gags as oh, well but no. so you know that yeah that's that's the that's true form singer. of dad yeah you yeah. can tell rock's had a couple of kids <laughs> Real big dad joke there. So, um, no, I've definitely developed um, the last year or so in, in eating and sort of for it was time to grow up a bit. So, yeah, definitely I've added lettuce in on my chicken sub at Commune and um, Raz has been talking about developing my uh, restaurant taste around Adelaide and trying to, you know, reach out and get to some new areas. So I'm taking that, that on notice. You went out the other night with Mitch and Hazy and, and Dill, didn't you? Where'd you go? Yeah, we we did. So we're trying to venture out. We all live um, beach side of Adelaide. So we're trying to venture out and... Um, find some new places. So I went to Show Show in Hyde Park, which was um, it was a very lovely feed. Okay. So what have you graduated? Just to lettuce, that's it. You still <laughs> nah. have to eat lettuce now. Uh, no, love love all salads. Um, acai bowls probably be my number one hit the last month. Because it, oh, I'm being fed income here. When you got here, it was pretty much Vegemite sandwiches at best, wasn't it? Yeah, it's probably just yeah, mainly just sandwiches or just plain chicken. Um, it's pretty much what. I just grew up eating, and if you, if you knew my mum, my mum's pretty basic and um, doesn't like it's doesn't very nice. doesn't no, nah, it's basic no, in no, f- food good. terms. So uh, she doesn't eat too much, and I, I guess we spent majority of the time together. So I just, yeah. I just ate what she ate, but um, yeah, the the weirdest ones probably I don't eat eggs, so that's the one I caught the most. And mum actually eats eggs, so just bacon on toast when we go for breakfast, amazing. Yeah, it's not a fan favourite from the boys or, or too many um, waitresses around Adelaide, that's for no, sure. We definitely give you a bit of stick, but, but let, let's talk about your mum. Uh, and everyone has some jokes and, you know, you and your mum are very close. What does she mean to you? Yeah, she's very important, I think, just growing up, spent a, a lot of time together. Um, we're pretty pretty similar characters as well. Um, pretty lighthearted, um, just like having a laugh and um, relaxing a bit as well. Um, but, yeah, she's pretty feisty and competitive as well, so I don't like getting on her bad side, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, we, we grew up together, um, basically dad worked a lot. So, yep. um, he was, yeah, normally working six days a week. So it was, it was me and mum a fair bit of the time. Um, and she loves her footy. So I guess she has no choice really growing up. That's fantastic. You actually, your mum moved over when you first got drafted as well. You shared a bed until you were 20 years <laughs> old, which is uh, a great, achieve, a great achievement, but, uh, moving forward, uh, I refer to you as the apprentice. Now that I've moved on, you've uh, taken over the role of prankster. So, just want to take you back to some of the things that uh, potentially happened to you when I was here, which I had no part in. But your car ended up in the middle of Alberton Oval. Yeah. So one training session, um, there was a few giggles going around in the hallway and all that. And I was like, hmm, "What's going on here?" Um, no one was really filling me in, but um, my keys were in my locker, which sometimes they weren't. Rock. They Sometimes go missing. they were missing from my locker. Um, so I thought, oh, well, can't be too bad. My keys are in my locker. So, yeah, got out and my car was in the goal square once and <laughs> everyone's just left and I've had to ring CD and say, um, how do I get off the oval? <laughs> <laughs> um, like, How do I actually get out? Like, yeah. I went to one gate and it was locked and then I didn't know if I should be driving around with the Hilux on the oval. And um, Yeah, so I was pretty rattled there. <laughs> who was it Rock that did that? Rock, and who was your, who was your little... Uh, Robin. No, well, I certainly didn't do it, and it's oh. been unproven who did it. But to give context there, the ground staff had actually gone home, locked the gates up, so he couldn't get his his vehicle off the ground. Um, your skateboard's gone missing from your house. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I like um, getting on the skateboard with the dog and mm. um, going to the park with him and um, riding that a fair bit. And I normally just leave it at my fr- front door, like it's a pretty safe neighbourhood yep. where I live. And having guys like Rock and Connor just around the corner, you know, if you never needed anything, you just go to them. But mm. yeah, the skateboard went missing for a few weeks and I thought, oh, someone's nicked my skateboard. So I better not start leaving anything at my front door anymore. And um, fair enough, you know, my skateboard was in Rose's front yard. So not sure how it made the ma- magical trip down, down the... F- 
street a bit. It but wouldn't have been Rock because he doesn't run or walk the street, so it couldn't have been him. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to say it, so lucky you yeah. did. Oh, we say it all the time. Be careful, Zach. Your car often went missing from training? Yeah, so that, that was where I was getting at before. I mm. um, often get to my locker and, you know, you've had pre-season, 15K session, 35 degrees, and all you're thinking about is getting home and putting the air con on and jumping on the couch and watching a bit of Netflix. And um, Yeah, and obviously no, keys are gone, um, car's moved, and, yeah, so I'm ringing Rocky and he's not picking up. And, um <laughs> don't know why if he didn't do it you'd just pick up and say What's it wasn't going me yeah, yeah it wasn't me um so yeah normally a few blocks away um yeah in, in nice summer in the pre-season isn't the funnest walk after training i was probably at the beach doing uh recovery or whatnot <laughs> making sure that my body was in a one shape <laughs> what's the best prank you've played on someone recently or uh over your time here i've played a fair few um recently you love a water, a cup full of water. I I do know you, there was a bit of a battle between you and a few, wasn't there? Yeah, that, there was this phase at the club. It started a bit with Dan Houston as well. Um, that yeah, you just open a little red ball can or a cup of water and leave it inside someone's locker. And every time you open your locker, you just get you just get all over <laughs> your feet and all that. So yeah, there was definitely a stage there um, where that wasn't. Was, every time you went to your locker, I was thinking, please don't fall. Like just <laughs> something like yeah. So that that was bad for a stage there. Yep. So a cup of water or a little Red Bull is the best prank. It's uh, You need to pick up your game if you want to take on the master there. Zach, now before we get to the fans' questions, I want to straighten up and ask you a footy question. How do you take your game to the next level? You've been around the traps um, you put through injury and uh, inconsistency. You probably haven't played your best footy that you would like to. I know that you take your game and, and review it as hard as anyone and it probably frustrates you a little bit at times. What's the one thing you're working on to make sure that you get to your you get the absolute most out of yourself. Yeah, that's been a bit frustrating this year. Um, was a bit sick during the end, probably a bit inconsistent there for a few weeks and then a um, little MCL. So, yeah, not out in the park as much as I would have liked to or at the standard I would have liked to. But, um, yeah, I think just, yeah, keep developing my midfield craft and um, just running patterns from there and, um, yeah, just keep developing that and hopefully spending more time in there. I think I can be a real asset to the team in there and, um, can really grow my game in there as well. So, And then hopefully with a bit more opportunity in there as well. Um, so, yeah, just looking forward to that and then um, just keep being a leader at that high, half forward role, which is a pretty tough one to play at AFL level. But, um, yeah, I think I have a good um, knowledge and understanding of it. So just doing that to a higher level when I need to. I'm glad you said that, Butsy, because it is the hardest role. You know, oh, he's not wrong. What? The high half forward. It's the hardest role. Thanks, you wouldn't know. You don't play high half yeah, but forward. When you play I deep. Did. You play deep. You, yeah. You're out of the goal He's square been there and so. done that, mate. I don't, I don't think you played too much. Half forward. I was a very, very good forward back in my day. I'll get you some tapes. I think I took five or six contested marks at the MCG one day against Melbourne. Back in uh, 2012, I was a genuine <laughs> superstar Melbourne, uh, as a yeah, forward. Average. Let's move on to some fan questions now. Adam Smith wants to know, are you scared of Chad Corns? Am <laughs> I scared of Chad Corns? Um... No, I'm actually not. I love I love um, getting in the chat and sort of stirring stirring the feathers up with him. Um, he's actually a pretty funny and relaxing guy um, yeah. once you get to know him, and um, he's actually got a good character and good humour around him. So, um, but yeah, when he when he gets a top off in the gym, um, <laughs> I like to keep I like to keep mine off. I uh, keep mine on. I mean, so why is um, he taking his top off in the gym? Yeah, well, okay. I don't think you'd know this just like me, Rock. But um, when you have a rig like that, you can probably do it. Yeah, him and Big Mick, they just sort of. I want to reenact that boat over Yeah, here. they just bounce oh. off each other in there. and yeah, It's quite scary and um, intimidating for a little skinny kid like me. <laughs> me too. I've got one here from Connor Day. What do you ask when you go to the barber? There you go. Mm, great question. Um, I know the answer. Give me the worst possible thing <laughs> that you can think of. <laughs> yeah, I've, <laughs> I've had a few shockers over my time. Um, but, yeah, I don't really ask for anything. I normally just get a haircut and then just ask them to keep repeating it and going over it. And, yep. Um, Sometimes I just, yeah, I shaved the head in the off-season, so probably won't go back down that path again. Um, the more hair on my hair, probably the better. <laughs> yes, you're not a very attractive young boy, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Taylor Mitchell wants to know, what is your t- favourite type of butter? You probably don't even eat butter. Um, I eat, I actually don't eat butter. I eat margarine, but proactivity. Nice, okay. little, nice, little, nice little drop there. There you go. <laughs> nice little drop. I've got one from Logan Clark. I hear there's a little 1v1 basketball happening in the off-season back home at Darley. <laughs> Can you confirm this? 
Yeah, so a few local kids from um, back home in the Ballarat League, up in Ballarat, um, have been on my tail about versus me in basketball for the last year or so. And yep. um, yeah, I've promised them this off season I'll, I'll get it done. So yeah, I've definitely been um, in the outdoor area here working on my shot and um, yeah, I think I need to put him in place. You rate yourself a bit. Are you are you Robbie Gray level or? I'm not Robbie Gray level, but I do owe him seven lunches for shooting <laughs> competitions. So <laughs> it probably means I've got a bit to work on. Yeah. Hain set one two three. Who is the most annoying player at the club? They want one two three. Yeah, go one two three. <laughs> Your top three. Yeah, Mitch Georgiatis. Under underrated this one, Raz. But you could probably back me up. Dan Hewson. Yep, he can be he a, bit, is a bit of a pest. A bit of a pest. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, um, um, I'd say Pep. Pep's pretty cheeky. Yep. Sam Pepper. There you go. I've got one from. Tommy Castretton. I'm going to go with that. I hope I've got that correct. Why did you choose number 18? Did you choose number 18? Is there a significance behind it? Um, I think I had a few numbers to choose out. I think yep. um, yeah, 21 or 18. There's a few other ones as well. But um, yeah, I, I think I just, I don't know why, just on the night that, yeah, I liked 18. So yep. um, yeah, just went with the 18. And um, yeah, I didn't actually, I don't think on the night knew that Kane Corns bought for so many games but yep. um, yeah after that yeah got to know Kane a bit and um, Chad so yeah it's a pretty special jump for the club so yeah pretty honoured to be in it we're going to have to wrap it up there unfortunately Razio's phone's going off in the background the captain and coach are trying to get hold of him so I don't know what they want he's obviously done something wrong over the weekend Very but uh, important mm, player we better get to that but thanks so much for joining us Zach you've given us a bit of an insight into you as a person and also as a footballer and uh, strength to strength and uh, I think you can be an absolute champion of the competition one day uh, just get back and uh, start finding that footy like I taught you how to do it back in the day when you made that All-Australian squad. But uh, thanks again for joining Rock the Rasbar. Thanks, Wizard Rock. This place is different. It has a soul, a heartbeat. It gets into your senses. It's more than football. It's belonging. Well, how good was Zach Butters? Yeah, it was good to have him on the show. As he said, he doesn't do a lot of media, so it was nice to just get him to open up a little bit and get an insight of the great man. Yes, and this brings us to KFC Friday Night Footy. Yep. How good was last weekend's result? Yeah, it was great, mate. St Kilda didn't fire a shot. St Kilda went down to the Western Bulldogs. We'll get to the challenge after this, but uh, let's move forward. Let's uh, let's place our bet now for okay. uh, Friday night. It's Richmond versus Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. Uh, Friday night footy brought to you by KFC. Okay. Who do you think is going to win? I think Fremantle will win. Okay, the margin doesn't matter because I think Richmond will bounce back this weekend. So No Martin, no Lynch, mate. That's fine. I think uh, they've got a lot of pride on the line and they'll uh, they'll be looking to hold eighth position because we know that it was very close last weekend. So um, are you a little bit nervous heading towards this challenge? No, I'm a bit pissed because you don't... You, we need Richmond to lose, mate. Like, don't, why are you backing them? I'm just saying who I think is going to win. No, I'm talking you obviously, about... No, you don't I'm, care about the club anymore, mate. I don't I'm, know what I'm, you're doing. I'm talking about your challenge that from last weekend because there's a mystery box with a few surprises in there that... Uh, <laughs> I'm told may go a little snake, little, little snake, and slither. Well, you've gone to Kyle Chimer's house and, and broke out one of his snakes. Have a you? little rattlesnake. And uh, before we let everyone go, I just want to remind everyone that the AFLW Camp Alberton will be mm-hmm. released soon on the club website. So keep an eye out for that. But also they have an open session this Saturday morning, 9 a.m. at Alberton Oval. If you want to get along and watch that, and of course the men's have an open training session, being school holidays. It's important that we get all the kids along. 9.45 a.m. Thursday morning for that open training session. Get along, have a look at the new new museum over there. And then also on Thursday night, there's a little documentary on Fox Footy, 9 p.m. Adelaide time, All Too Human, brought okay. to you by Red Bull of Travis Boak. That'll be good. The great man. Into his life, what, he, what he's up to, his footy. Bit of everything? Yeah, a bit of everything. More so what he does off the field than, than on the okay. field. Um, so that's a, that's going to be a great watch for everyone. And, of course, I want to remind you of the games this weekend. Saturday afternoon, Port Adelaide take on the Geelong Football Club in a must-win game, 4.05 Adelaide Oval. It should be a cracker. 
We're going to win that? I think so. No Tom Stewart helps. Certainly does. I think we're uh, a really good chance. Geelong don't have a great record at Adelaide Oval, so hopefully we can continue that against Port Adelaide. And Saturday night, the Magpies take on Centrals at 7.40pm at Woodville Oval. I'll be there. You probably won't. <laughs> uh, no, I won't be. I've, uh, I've got a few yeah, personal things to take care of Saturday yeah. night after the game of course. Um, once we finish calling the game. But let's get in this challenge because I'm really looking forward to this. A, a mystery box. Hang around to watch that. We are back for the KFC Fried Night Challenge from last week. Orazio went down. He tips St Kilda to win. It's the mystery box. So I'm going to put something in the box. Orazio, you're going to put your hand in there, have a little feel around, see if you can make out what it is and uh, commentate through that. So here we go. Here's the first item is going in right now into the box. And I'll uh, I'll tell you when it's all ready to go. Ooh, tss, ooh. All right. Let's get this crappy jar. Here we go. Hands in, Orazio, when you're ready. There you go. One hand in or? Yep, that's fine. Have a feel around. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh it's a plastic snake. Yeah, that's one. There's still two other items in there. Oh, I need to find them, do I? Yes. He's moving his arm around. Oh. 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 What's that? Can you make out what that... Oh. <laughs> that one's alive. No, it's not. I don't know what that is. It's soft as well. Um... I don't know, a, a turd? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a uh, soft banana. I think that uh, Nort just pulled off his desk yeah. full of uh, jellio things. Did you grab that? Yeah, it's gone, so there's only one thing left. Oh! Again, it's a fake snake again. Another plastic snake, so that's uh, Nort's gags. Um, and Terry Dacto, we will get you that jumper. He's the man. Here comes the second item. Arose. What do you mean the second item? There's that was three. That's what no, you just there's said. There's three, three different uh, components to this challenge. Sections. <sighs> Sections. Here okay. comes uh, item number two. You've got to put your hand in there. Uh, just wait, 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 wait. I haven't put it in yet. It's quite, it's quite heavy. All right. Now let's put your hand in there and uh, see what you can make of that. Yes. It's yeah. a plate. Yes. Now, what's in I'm not touching in there. Yes. What's in there? Oh. What? <laughs> He's <laughs> feeling around. Come on. What I is don't it? No, that's soft. That's either pasta. Come on. Put your hand back no, in there. No, mate. I'm not. It's spaghetti. <laughs> it's canned spaghetti. That's what it is. <laughs> and baked beans. Yes. Is it? Yep. Yes. You've uh, you've got that one correct. You only dabbled the little finger in there. You didn't. I, uh, I could feel it. It was disgusting. You didn't jump in there for that. No. That's uh, that's dinner for me tonight. So. Uh, oh, We'll get to that, and here's the last one. Jeez, I've gone well here. I'm Ooh, this is a, two this from is two. A good one. Here we go. Now you just put your hand in there, reach in. Are you ready? Are you done? Yep, it's in there. Don't no, you holding that? No, Let I'm go not of that, it. mate. Here you go. Your <laughs> what is a plate? Again, you're holding. I'm not holding it. It's on there. Oh, he's having a little fiddle. Get your hand in there. You're only no, putting your mate, finger not, in there. What is it? Peanut butter or something? No. Honey? No. Keep going. Grippo? No. Stop being an idiot. What is it? What? It's a candle? Stop being an idiot, Rock. <laughs> I'm opening. What is it? I was close. It's uh, oh. mashed up marshmallows. So uh, not a bad challenge this week, actually. you got to put your hand in the mystery box. So unfortunately, we didn't have anything that could uh, move because of uh, health and safety rules that uh, if a snake had a bit new, we don't know about your safety. Yeah, that but stinks, that marshmallow. Thank you for joining Rock the Rasbar <laughs> episode 15. Oh.